You're still watching The Breakfast. Uh, we're at the tail end of our menu this morning. Uh, we have a doctor... We have Dr. Chima Onoka, uh, a professor of community medicine, on standby to talk about our next uh, issue, and that's um, the chat box. Uh, we alluded to that before we went on the earlier break. Now, the NCDC and UNICEF have partnered to come up with what they are calling uh, the chat box to combat COVID-19 misinformation that's what they're saying um, from the get-go i must say i'm a bit skeptical about this one because we know that there are other means they even have a functional whatsapp yes. facebook twitter all of that information uh, platform now the chat box according to the information can be assessed for free across all networks via sms so there is a slight distinction here it is not you don't need internet uh, for this all you need to do is send coronavirus to a short code um, also we know for a fact that uh, facebook messenger and whatsapp users are able to send a um, message to a number to get verified uh, information on um, on coronavirus so uh, we, we want to look at this um, new move, this launch of a new chat box uh, by NCDC and UNICEF. Um, and my question to you, uh, Dr. Onoka, thank you very much first for joining us. Thank you for having All right. What is this um, uh, chat box all about? Is it going to really counter fake news? What do we know about it and do we need it? Mm, a very good question. We have some things existing, you know, by different groups. Um, but I think the difference with this one is that it's Nigerian connected at, um, based at the NCDC, which people have accepted is a government institution that drives it. So that's different from a chat box that maybe is a WHO one or is outside Nigeria or by an authority that is less than the government one providing leadership. So yes, we do need it and it is important at that level. This is a good level for it. All right, Dr. Onoka, let me, let me ask this. The statement says that the Nigerian government is partnering with UNICEF and, of course, um, with the, with the, through the NCDC uh, to bring up this chat box to uh, discourage and uh, to uh, battle fake news. Um, also, maybe with the expectation of a second wave of COVID-19 in Nigeria, as it is also showing signs in other uh, countries in the world. But I, I want to, you know, ask if we had a challenge with fake news in the initial stages and most of 2020. Um, because I remember that the only source of information with regards to COVID-19 has been the NCDC and no one else. So have we had to battle fake news that made this necessary? So, you know, the first, first question was whether we need it. Yes. The second question now is whether it's going to be effective. I am not very optimistic. I share the sentiments that you're raising. Because we have Nigerians who still don't really believe that COVID is big enough to disrupt their lives. Because that is in place, fake news will try. And it's only those who feel very burdened and all that will be using the platform. And um, so there's a lot that needs to happen to make the platform to serve the purpose for which it's intended. Even the discussion about second wave, you know, Nigerians are not thinking about it, maybe because our own lockdown was not even really a lockdown like many people experienced. It was a lockdown, especially amongst the you know, uh, cream of the society and government institutions and the private places. 
but not you know where it concerns the ordinary nigerians people have been playing football every day since even during the lockdown and all of that so is that effectiveness and i don't think that people are but see it as a big burden um to for it to disturb their lives uh, wouldn't it have been an energy better expended in expanding the existing um, communication channels than launching a new chat box? Because some would argue that a lot of monies would have been, you know, pumped into getting a chat box working. Um, what, what do you say to that? Um, those other, I think the chat box can also serve those other purposes. At least if it gives us the opportunity for people to get rapid information, um, rapid responses. Um, so that's why I don't think it's a, it's a waste. Um, we can use that if we can get people to engage with it more. And um, I, I think that's more like what we'll focus on. Um, I, I don't think the cost will be far from what people have been dealing with in terms of cost of managing information during this time. So we can leverage it if rapid information will come. Mm -hmm. What would be your assessment of the acceptability? Um, if, I mean, one would argue, one may argue that uh, since you don't need um, internet for this particular one, it will be more applicable um, in the rural areas. Um, would you say maybe that is the target and not the you know, more conventional um, population? Yeah, social media penetration is still not very strong, um, whichever way we look at it. Um, the people on Twitter are not really those in the rural areas and not also the people that we consider uh, left behind by the society. So those people um, might still not make very good use of it simply because um, engaging with SMS and all that and their time, they have to believe that it's of value to them, and which is a fundamental problem. COVID is not being seen by more than half of Nigerians today as bigger than malaria or typhoid. Well, okay. let, let's move... Okay, let, let's move a little away from it and take your perception uh, on the um, alleged uh, vaccination that is being celebrated at the moment that will work to combat COVID-19. If we have that information, uh, do you think that uh, we still need to uh, go all out when it comes to um, focusing on trying to disseminate information if the vaccine itself um, is as 90% effective as claimed. So I think that may be one of the useful aspects of that kind of chatbot to start reorienting um, our citizens to start looking at accepting the vaccine. Um, nothing shows for now that Nigerians should be willing to accept the vaccine will have a big a long journey um, in time to convince people so whatever platforms we use which can include this will be useful to start driving that information right. and allay fears about the vaccine uh, dr chima let's also i i really am I'm struggling to understand um when you know the the term fake news is uh, brought in here uh, so can you help us really understand why um, that is and what type of stories, you know, have you heard that might be tagged as fake news with regards to COVID-19? Because like I said earlier, the NCDC, um, both on social media and, of course, uh, through uh, the televisions across the country, have been the only platform that have given information with regards to COVID-19. Have you heard any stories? Um, have you seen any information that is very different from what the NCDC has uh, put out that, uh, you know, you might tag as fake news? Well, I, I think the stories about the fake news are still the same. It's still the ones that we've all engaged with before. COVID doesn't exist. 
you can use this money to you can use some of um you know water and salt and lime and all kinds of things to cure it um it's still the same kind of thing so i i don't think it's the fake news that is really a problem it's it's more about maybe that's how we should push them to better use the platform and i think we can all contribute our voices to that all it's right, about doctor. convincing people that um this is still a problem and then even the vaccine that is coming can help us to better achieve health security in nigeria all right Dr. Nigeria Chima, to accept oh, no, that. Yes. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on this latest development as it regards uh, combating COVID-19. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Sounds like he's on the road this morning. Yeah, sounds much, very much like it. Um, when I saw the story, to be honest, I was really skeptical because I think that whatever monies that might have been expended have been expended in creating this chat box could have been put to better use in my thinking. I'm not always one to, you know, just look at something and not see the merit. Um, but when he spoke and talked about, and, and in the course of the conversation, I thought about those in the rural community who don't have access to the internet, um, they can make use of this. But to, has, how is that information going to be passed on? Because the same information is being shared on conventional media. So will there be some sort of mechanism to ensure that people in the rural community that needs this more go to the community. My mother, sometimes she gets some kind of X SMS. She will call me, ah, I just got this SMS, so uh, I don't understand what are they saying, you know. Yeah. If that kind of information can get to people in the rural community, I think... Yeah, uh, I, I, would, they, I would always people, encourage, yeah. you know, whichever extra steps that we can take that will help, um, of course, you know, with fighting the virus, um, with spreading information about the virus and, and all of that. You know, I've just really been confused about, you know, the term fake news here because I really haven't heard any, um, any other pl sure. platform or channel <laughs> with, uh, which uh, Nigerians have gotten information about COVID. It has been the NCDC web website. It has been no, the But NCDC there has so been some, info from some petrifying information on social media about how you can cure COVID-19 using old methods of treating malaria where you cover yourself. Mm. With, you know, it, it, at the peak of it, you saw some Nigerians abroad sharing videos of how they were trying to combat uh, COVID-19. And then you hear people say you can take all, so, all manner of things to help you. So those kind of information are shared on social media. You know, so it might not be um, in the conventional media like you see it, but there are some information that are very harmful about the virus and out and there is, that needs free. to be checked. Yes, they said this is free. So um, it's a good one. Let's uh, be a bit more optimistic and hope that it will get to the people who truly need it um, in the coming days. So many thanks. More, uh, just also a reminder that we still need to do more testing. Mm -hmm. And another reminder that we still have the National Orientation And Agency. please wear face masks. It's um, still fashionable. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's still definitely. maintain social distancing. Um, but also the National Orientation Agency still exists. Yes, Question they might for work hand in hand day. with the NCDC at a time like this. They might work hand in hand with this chat box with UNICEF, but it still exists. And the easiest ways that um, you know, we can get information to the most rural communities um, across Nigeria may not be through SMS. It may not be because there's a lot of those people who still don't have the broadband the penetration phone, and yeah. the you know, um, telco penetration that we're talking about here. But once again, I'm encouraging every single step that we might well, want to take uh, with regards to spreading more information about COVID-19 and getting more people aware about it. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.